Damn. So finally, the summer temperatures have hit Berlin, which means, well, it means a few things. It means it's time for the iced coffee. It means that I can finally wear sunglasses justifiably on the vlog, but only outside, don't worry. It also means that I'm gonna have to abandon the, the heavy rod denim for a while in favor of a much more light, much more civilized way to fabric. Well, this does give me the chance to explore something else I've been thinking about for a while. Something else I wanted to explore a little bit more on this channel. And that is to, to talk about, about good quality, timeless items that you can step by step add to your wardrobe. So yes, these things, or the vast majority of these things, are going to be expensive items. They're going to be expensive up front. But they, they're classics and they're quality, they're crafted, they're crafted products. Which means if you actually break it down in the long run, if you break it down to, to cost per wear, what you're going to find is that these provide much, much better value for money than, than the cheaper alternatives ever will. You see, this isn't actually so far away from raw denim. There are, are lots of other items out there that, that share the same core value as, as a good pair of jeans. I mean, I'm talking about, about quality, about craft, about history, about narrative, and that's not only that's brand narrative and it's personal narrative as well. I'm talking about sustainability, I'm talking about ethics. There is a myriad of, of other items out there that share these same core values as you do find in, in raw denim. These items can be considered classics of design, they can be considered classics of style. I'd even go so far in some cases to say that these items will be archetype. Um, they've just, I mean, th these things have been around for, for generations, they've been around for decades. And they have transitioned between generation to generation, they've been transitioned between associations, between culture, between counterculture. For whatever it was, for, for whatever reason, the design of whatever it might be, I know that's very vague, but um, the design of whatever it might be, it stuck. It just worked in that moment, and it's worked since then. And so, these classics of style, even though they might be a little bit more expensive, and they actually might be a lot more expensive in some cases, but they are worth the investment in. Right, to kick this thing off, I'm going to be comparing um, a couple of pairs of, of classic sunglasses. Uh, it seems kind of uh, fitting given the weather. So here, um, well, in this box, I have a pair of uh, Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Now they're the original Wayfarers. Um, Original because I think there's a lot of variations in the basic design in the, the, the Ray-Ban lineup now. And here, well, here I have a pair of Persol's 649s. Um, yeah, another, another classic. Um, this whole, well, the whole idea behind this is actually inspired by, um, by the costume design in Call Me By Your Name. So Timothy Chalamet was wearing a pair of Ray-Ban Wayfarers, and um, Arnie Hammer's character was wearing a pair of the Persols. Guys, if you want to see like the best costume design since, since the talented Mr. Ripley, then you should definitely check out that movie if you haven't already. I've actually had these glasses for a little while now, um, and so they've seen quite a bit of wear, FaceTime. Um, don't sue me, Apple. But uh, I kept all the packaging, I kept all the blurb inside, so it can kind of be like an unboxing. So, welcome to the first ever unboxing. Uh, let's start. Let's start with the Ray Bans. So yeah, this box here. It's. I I, I know that things have to ship in cardboard boxes, um, just for for storage and stacking and all that. But this is really, it's it's a crap cardboard box. This one I'm going to be keeping, this one goes straight in the bin. In the box um, you get this, the, the case, the Ray-Ban case. Um, it is definitely very, very plasticky. It's got like a rubber, uh, sorry, no, a leather stamp on the, the plastic. Uh, it's not that convincing as being leather though. Inside is nice and soft and smooth. Um, so protecting your glasses and then yeah, well, here's the glasses. We'll have a look at those in a second 
And here's all the stuff you get with it. So the icons. So you just get a little booklet with a lot of marketing blurb and showing the iconic sunglasses that Ray-Ban have developed over the years, which is actually, to be honest, that's quite interesting seeing like an overview. So yeah, I'll be keeping that. Uh, this has been unopened so far. So we have um, Ray-Ban.com. I think that's just the little information, maybe warranty card. Yeah, that's not so interesting. And then we've got pretty standard, run-of-the-mill, actually far too small. Like, that's too tiny, Ray-Ban, seriously. Um, yeah, but that's the cleaning cloth anyway. Tiny little cleaning cloth. I wanted to double that size. <laughs> yeah, the case. So, the case isn't bad. It's very utilitarian. Uh, it's not particularly high quality, definitely not. It's got a snap button closure, which I like. Um, it's inside for the, is that the bridge of the glasses. There is a little plastic piece and that actually also helps when the glasses are inside, not to, to crush the glasses, which is actually very, very good. I, I've got a few of these cases. I've got a, no, I've got one of these cases. I've got one other pair of Ray-Bans. And they actually do a quite good job. It's solid on the front, the back is a little bit more flexible, but the front is the bit with the lenses they need protected. So yeah, that's that's great. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave that for now. That was all the things that were in the Ray-Ban box. And now we're gonna have a look at the parasol ones. So already with the box, just even at a glance, you can see this is a much more it's a much higher quality box. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's a higher quality product, but the box is much higher quality. And similarly, when you actually get into to the box, the case also looks higher quality. But this, this is a case of case. This is a case of not judging something by its cover, because actually with the experience the last few days, I don't like this case as much as I do the Ray-Ban one, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. Okay, so box case with the glasses inside. Here again, we've got like our little information booklet in a bunch of different languages. Nobody ever reads this stuff. Uh, we have a cleaning cloth that I hope is gonna be bigger than the, than the Ray-Ban one. Certainly a nicer color. Yeah, that's better. It's, it's printed with the parasol, it's a decent size. Yeah, I like that. I like that way, way more because if I'm cleaning my glasses to that small one, I just, I'm gonna get fingerprints on one lens, clean them off, move over to the next lens, and then get fingerprints on that same lens that I just cleaned. So, a bigger cloth's always better. Then we get, right, there's not so much information on the brand here. This is just a certificate of guarantee where you get 24 months guarantee on any failures within the glasses. Within the, my, any manufacturer failures or uh, oh and then yeah you got this little sticker that was stuck onto the lens which you've got to pick off which I really don't like at all because I'm afraid that I'm going to scratch the lenses okay so here are the glasses again we're going to be getting to these in a second but this case it is plastic again it looks better it looks nicer on first uh, first impressions but it's completely like and totally soft. It's just like squish, 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 squish. It does have something inside for the, the, the bridge of the glasses. So just in the middle, it can't squish too much, but still it's just, it's far too, it's very, very floppy. And also this, you can he's, see here, this like my magnetic clasp here. It's, it's just not very strong. Like things are gonna, if this is knocking around in your bag with the glasses inside, things are gonna open this up super easy, glasses are gonna fall, fall out and could get damaged. So this case I wouldn't use day to day when I'm taking around the glasses or when I'm traveling with it, I'm going to invest in a better one. So yeah, I'm gonna keep the box though. This is gonna be useful for something rather. 
or maybe if I want to ever resell them, but I doubt that. Okay, to the sunglasses. Now, these are both Italian brands. Right, okay. First thing, before, um, before all the, the, the hate just like runs down my comments, yes, I know that Ray-Ban was an American brand. It was from Bosch & Lohm, but Bosch & Lohm sold it uh, to Luxottica. Uh, it's an Italian company and actually the same company that uh, owned the, the Persol brand as well. They're, they're massive. Um, but they sold it back in the 90s, I believe 1995. Their headquarters are now in Milan. And so, yeah, I will say an Italian company, an Italian brand. These two styles, so we've got the Ray-Ban Original Wayfarer and we've got the Persol 649s. I would say that these two styles, not counting all of the sort of plethora of variations that they have on frames, frame color and lenses, whatever, I'd say these two styles are the most iconic in their lineup. And with that, I'm also going to say that I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be arguing one way or another, which is the most stylish or which is the most iconic. I think both of them have got like their own individual merits where they're just so cemented into, into style and into culture that you couldn't argue one way or another. I'm just going to talk about my, my personal impressions about the glasses and about the quality of the glasses. So we're going to start off with, we're going to start off with the Persols. So this is, yeah, this is the Persol 649s and I think, well, what's quite funny about these glasses is that these were originally developed for, for, for tram drivers in, in Milan. Uh, the Italians do a lot of things with style and apparently driving trams is one of them. Uh, they were developed to be comfortable to wear the whole day and also to be large enough to give like good face coverage and good sort of eye coverage to keep the sun out of your eyes. And they made a couple of like leaps forward in doing this. One of them is, is this. You guys see that? So these, these two pins on either, either leg, these are not just for, for decoration. They're actually a separate hinge, I'd say. So you've got the main hinge here and you've got the hinge here. They give a little bit more flexibility around about the temples. I mean, these are, these are quite big glasses and they can be considered quite heavy glasses as well. So when you're wearing them, this just like, it wraps nicely around about your temples, which is important to me because I've got a big bohead. And that just makes them very, very comfortable wear over like a long period of time. So perfect for um, your, your tram drivers in Milan. I had, they're made of acetate, they're made in Italy. And as I said, I wanted to, I wanted to concentrate on my, my impressions of these glasses. And the positive impression started as soon as I took them out of the case. They just, they just felt like a quality product. There, there's a crispness to them, there's a, a weight to them, not only physically, but like you can just tell as soon as you touch them that this was crafted by somebody. It wasn't just like churned out of a mass manufactured factory somewhere in the world. And that makes a huge difference to, to the way that I've particularly connected with these glasses. And so I really, really enjoyed wearing these over the past, I think I've had them for a month or so. They just feel like a very, very high quality product and they work with almost anything and they work almost anywhere as well. So that is, yeah, that's a brief overview of the parasols. If, if, you, want, if you want to really get deep into the history. Okay, the parasol brand was started in 1917. They first started off with... Um, they were making sunglasses for aviators and for sportsmen. And then at some point these came along. Yeah, there's many other videos, much better than this, obviously, out there that's gonna deep dive into the history of parasols. Here we have uh, the Ray-Ban Wayfarers. And I mean, this is such a classic design. Like I absolutely, I love this design, I think. For me personally, I think it suits the vast majority of people out there. However, I mean, I, I, I bought these at the same time. Um, I actually bought them with the intention of seeing which one I prefer and returning one of them. 
but because of individual reasons, I actually, I really like both of them. I think they're classics and I think they're actually worth investing in, so I'm keeping both of them. Anyway, so I opened this one first, the, the Persols first, and then I opened the, the, the Ray-Bans. And my first, my, like, my gut reaction when I opened the, the Ray-Bans in comparison with the Persols was that, yeah, okay, I'm definitely gonna give back the Ray-Bans. There wasn't the same, from, from the opening of the cardboard box to the touch and feel of, of the, the case here, there wasn't that same feeling of quality. They've, they've definitely got the weight to them. They've definitely got the style to them, but these feel less refined. They feel not less quality, just less refined. This seems much more like, like a mass manufactured product. Now, I mean, both of these are made in Italy, but just by looking at the, the writing on the inside of the leg here, you just see that it's a bit fuzzy it's not that sharp. And then, yeah, on the other side as well, where there's the sort of information about the, um, the style number and the size and things, again, that's a bit fuzzy compared with the parasols. There isn't that um, sleekness and that sharpness to, to the acetate as well. There doesn't seem to be the, the depth of color and sort of that 3D effect of looking through the acetate as well. I know that's something that's very uncontrollable when you're getting into like mass manufacturing these, but still, it leaves an impression. And then we go to, to go to the little logo on the lens here as well. It's, it's definitely sharper on the, on the inside, but A, I'm not too sure if I find, if I would like that very much, don't find it too necessary. I think it's a little bit show off. Um, over here on the other side, there's an etching of, of Ray-Ban. Here's an interesting fact. If you ever come across uh, a pair of Ray-Bans in like a second-hand shop or vintage shop, look for this little etching here. If it says Ray-Ban, then they're more modern Ray-Bans. If it says B and L, that's Bosch and Loam, then they're vintage Ray-Bans and you should probably snap them up if they're a good price. I'm um, coming over to the, the logo on the, on the leg here as well. Again, this just doesn't feel as crisp as, okay, there's no logo on the parasols, but there's this beautiful arrow, like this iconic arrow hinge here. And this is just very beautifully inserted into the, uh, into the leg. And it just feels, you don't, you don't feel any transition here. You feel transition between the material, but there's no sharp edges or anything like that. Here, there's actually, there's lack of sharp edges. This just feels like a, a mass manufactured, like just cookie cutter stamped out logo that somebody just sticks on the side. The hinges on the inside, they're actually, they're very good quality. They really, really are. Um, I've got no problem with that. They feel nice and stable. Yep, they're not really flopping around at all. Those are, those are more stable. Those are more solid. This, you can see it and you can feel it. You might be able to hear it as well, put it next to the mic. There's a little bit of shake, but I'm, there's no doubt in my mind that these hinges will stay solid, stay, they're not gonna break anytime soon. There's, there's not the, the sort of flexible leg uh, that you've got on the, um, on the parasols either. So after a while with these heavy sunglasses, I do find that they start to annoy me a little bit around here. Um, but again, this is gonna depend on your head shape, your head size and everything. So this is just my personal gripe about them. I mean, the reason that I decided to keep these is just because I feel that they are such an iconic shape and they work so very, very well in so many different situations. And that, that level of, of history and that le level of narrative behind this particular pair of sunglasses, even though that I don't find them as good quality as the parasols, it means that I really love them and I really, I want to keep them. All this to say that I, it sounds like I'm really slamming the Ray-Bans here. I, I'm, I'm, I don't intend to. They're still an extremely good quality pair of, of sunglasses, definitely. But I'm just like comparing them with, with the parasols. Maybe it's an unfair comparison. I mean, the parasols were 190 euros and the Ray-Bans were 140 euros. So that is, yeah, 50 euros of difference. 
I, I'm wondering if, the, if they put that 50 euros into the Wayfarers, what they would do differently. Would they bring them up to that quality? Uh, would you get... Uh, actually, yeah, to be honest, the Ray-Ban case is, is much, much better than the Parasol case, so can't say anything about that. So, yeah, there is a, there is a price difference, and that obviously translates into, into the details. And I think, I think you can feel that. The funny thing is, if, if you really were to sit me down and say, okay, like you get to keep one of these sunglasses, what would I pick? And this is, this is a strange one as well. I, I probably, I'd probably go for the Ray-Bans for, for no real logical reason. I, I, I can't explain it. If it was really sort of gun to my head, why that would ever happen, I don't know. But really, if I, if I could only choose one of these, I think I would choose, choose the Ray-Bans. I, there's just a, there's a classicness behind it that I, I really, really enjoy. And there's an association behind that that I, I'm drawn to maybe maybe over these. So for for quality, like the parasols win, for me, I am um, like that's that's a very like qualitative, quantitative, qualitative um, answer to to that. Like the parasols win hands down for for that. But in terms of styling, in terms of what I would prefer to keep in my face for the longest, yeah, I would. I would say the Wayfarers are the ones that I, I would choose. I'd actually be really, really curious what you guys prefer and, and well, what you guys prefer and why. Do you prefer like the, the Wayfarers or do you, do you prefer the, the parasols? And which ones do you have? Which ones do you like better? And yeah, the reasons behind that. And also this is completely narcissistic, but like, which ones do you think suit me better? Like the parasols uh, or are the wayfarers, or sh shall I just be done with it and just like put a towel over my head? Face or radio? Maybe I should start a podcast. Right. Anyway, um, away with that nonsense. Uh, guys, if you've enjoyed this video and if this is your first time here, maybe you could hit that subscribe button if this has been something that you've been into. Um, if you feel it's added some value, then it'd be awesome if you could give us a like. There's also that bell icon, and that way you're going to get notified every single time that I drop a video. Um, what else, what else, what else? Well, there's, there's all the links down below to, to all our social media and all the other good stuff. And yeah, guys, it was very kind of you to tune in. I'll see you in the next vlog.